Here with head men's basketball coach Blake Mellinger coming off of a busy road weekend last weekend. You guys get a couple days off, no Wednesday game. So second longest break you guys have had this season, seven days off, facing Catawba tomorrow on Saturday as we speak here on Friday. We didn't get to talk in between the rescheduled Carson Newman game, which was on Thursday, and then the game at Coker, which was on Saturday. So Let's kind of take a look at the weekend as a whole. That Carson Newman game on Thursday, they put up 109 points. They kind of ambushed you guys right away. I mean, had Kalen Lightford not hit four threes in the first couple minutes and had 12 of the team's first 14 points, it could have been even worse at that first under under 16 media timeout. Uh, that Carson Newman team was a really good team and kind of what we expected. Um, in a game like that, I mean, what's – What's the positive takeaways for your team? I mean, there were some some good performances. Obviously, Kalen Lightford had 15 points, hit five threes. Thought Lav played pretty well in that one as well. Zion Fruster, you know, still found his points. Um, what did you take away from that game and, you know, moving on to the next one against Coker? Um, honestly, the best thing, when you get in a game like that, the best thing that comes from it is when it's over. Um, they, when, they were lights out. Like, they were really, really good that night. Um, I didn't think we were our best, but at the same time, like the way they were playing um, and the way they were executing offensively, they were going to be really, really hard to beat, honestly, no matter how well you played. But, yeah, I mean, there were, you can always take positives away. Like you mentioned, those two guys, Lob and Kalen, had, um, had decent games and like just, you know, hopefully continue to build confidence from those guys for them to carry forward through the rest of the season. And so then we saw – Ron Uka not play in the Anderson game before Carson Newman. Then he was dressed and did play a few minutes against Carson Newman. And then you get to Coker on Saturday. Ron was out. Deuce Wingfield was also out in that game. Patrick Shelley has been out for the last, I think, eight or nine games now, hoping to get him back soon, obviously. But dealing with these injuries and these kind of fluctuations, you guys have had to throw out nine different starting lineups this year. I mean, how difficult is it to kind of – judge your performances as a team when that's the case and there's just not a ton of rhythm with the rotation yeah I mean honestly right now it's really been the story of our season we just I think you know we haven't had a full complement of players since I think like the second or third week of the season so it's just been you know for me as a coach it's really hard to gauge because you know if you lose like one player and you know I look think back to last year like you know, we lost JP to an ACL four games in, and like it's kind of like final, and you can and you can kind of adjust. But like for us lately, it's been like a revolving door. So you don't really know who you're going to have night in and night out, and it does. It makes it really, really hard. And in that game against Coker, it's hard not to play the what if and Deuce Wingfield, one of your bigger and more athletic and best defenders, Andre Lavelle, who's Coker's best player, and rightfully so, he's a really good player, went off for 36, one of his best games of the year. Hard not to see how maybe that could have gone different with Wingfield on the floor, but albeit he wasn't, and you guys were still really close in that game, had a chance to win it, uh, but that's a that's a tough team and a tough place to play, and, you know, they've got Michael Lamberti, who's their first-year head coach, but an assistant at West Liberty, and they certainly play that that kind of exact same style, that up-tempo, fast pace. They give up 100 points a game, but they also score 100, and it's kind of worked out for them, and it worked out in that game. Yeah, it did. I thought, you know, from that perspective, I thought, we handled their pressure really, really well. I think we had seven turnovers for the game. Um, the thing that killed us is we couldn't keep them out of the paint. You know, I think it was, I don't know, one or two possession game there the last, I don't know, the last five minutes. And, like, Lavelle just kept bullying us to the paint. We really had a hard time, uh, hard time guarding him. So credit to them. A big reason on offense why you guys were in the game the whole time was Carmelo Pacheco. Career high, 28 points. Another game where he hits four threes. He's really starting to come back from that injury to the level that we saw. And, you know, I think some people forget in the game that he got hurt against Newberry, he went down with 15 minutes left in the second half and had 21 points already. He was starting to reach this, like, newfound level of where he's going to be a freshman of the year candidate. It seems like he's starting to get back there now. He's had two or three really good games and then the career high, 28 against Coker. Yeah, I mean, he's playing really well. Like, honestly, he's still hurting quite a bit. The, you know, the, the biggest thing I can say about Carmelo is, like, he's just a really, really tough kid. 
Like, you know, in, in normal, normal circumstances, I don't even know that he's out there playing right now, but he's just like, you know, he's one of those guys that just kind of refuses to to sit over there, even though he's a little banged up and, you know, coming off an injury. So, like, credit to him. Like, you know, he's obviously a big piece of what we do and somebody we're really going to rely on heavily here the rest of the season. But, you know, more than anything he's doing from a uh, statistical statistical perspective, like the thing that he, he is, is, like, he's just a really, really tough guy. You guys are, you know, we talked about Lav and how he's now started eight straight games and he's really played well. And I would say seven or six of those games, especially scoring. When you recruit a guy like that, a six, seven forward who can shoot it, who can handle the ball a little bit and, and kind of just maintain his own with the ball in his hands. You have, I feel like you have a certain vision of what that can bring to the team. Is this kind of the, you know, what we're getting from Lav out of the last few games? Is that kind of the vision you had when you recruited him and tried to bring him here? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he just creates so many mismatches, especially if you try to guard him with bigger, quote unquote, bigs. Like he can really expose you on the offensive end. And then he's big and physical enough and uh, versatile, versatile enough defensively where he can, you know, he can guard bigger players, but can, he can also guard wing-type players, guys that can play on the perimeter. So when you have a guy like that that you can kind of move around and put in different spots, and, and you know, it makes things a lot easier. So Catawba coming in on Saturday. Only time you guys are going to face them this year. Very good team in the South Atlantic Conference. At one point, we're receiving votes in national polls, not as of right now. But they're coming off their biggest win of the season. They just won on Wednesday against Wingate at home. Got revenge after losing to Wingate a couple weeks ago. They handed Wingate their first loss in the South Atlantic Conference this season. Um in your experience, how much does the previous game or few games of your opponent factor into their performance when you face them? Some teams would rather face an opponent who's on a losing streak and comes in with their head down. Some teams would rather face an opponent who's got a big win and maybe they have the come down going into the next game. What's your experience been like with that? Um, I think it varies. You know, I think we've probably seen it from every every angle. I think it's all about where that team's at you know, mentally and, you know, coming off a, uh, a big win on Wednesday, I would think they will they'll come in here really engaged. You know, they're really, really physical. They're very, you know, extremely deep. So, um, you know, we'll have, we'll have our work cut out for us for sure. They got a couple of preseason all-conference selections, but Catawba's kind of interesting. They started their season really late. They have not played that many games this year as much as anybody in the, in the sack. Um, nobody stands out statistically in, in you know, the scoring area, but like you said, they're deep. They've got a lot of guys who do things really well. What have you noticed that's kind of been their, their strong point this year? Yeah, I mean, I think for them, like, you got – one, you can't turn the ball over. Like, they're going to pressure you. They're going to get out in passing lanes. They're going to be really physical on both ends of the floor. Um, they're really going to put a lot of pressure on the offensive glass. So, you know, I think for us and our game plan, like, we've got to keep them out of the paint. We've got to make them beat us over the top, so to speak. And then, um, you know, we're really, really going to have to rebound the ball. So, um, you know, they're going to have guys – at times, on, they're going to have guys on the floor that – you know, three guys on the floor are six, six or six, seven or above. And, you know, they're not long rangey guys. They're physical dudes out there. So, you know, we're really going to have to be ready for that. And one final one before we let you go. I ran into Lavs Fekovic on campus yesterday and he talked about how excited he is for tomorrow's game. And I asked him why. And he kind of looked at me dumbfounded he said because everybody's back on campus and there's going to be a ton of people there how excited are you as a as a coach and a coaching staff and just you know what's the, what's the atmosphere in the locker room finally fans back on campus and we get a home game and it's a big one too yeah i mean i think it's maybe the first time we've played you know since maybe the first weekend when the students have been here so it'd be really nice hopefully we get a good crowd uh tomorrow and moving forward we've got a, a stretch here or i think we have like five out of our next seven at home um Played really well at home at this point, so hopefully we can, uh, you know, use our home court to our advantage. Well, we're looking forward to it. Should be a good atmosphere and hopefully a good game, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you.